Good morning, Allie. Welcome back to Ishi in person. Good morning, Travis. I'm glad to be here. So you were with us as a student ambassador in 2019? Yes, that's correct. Oh, that is so great. I remember we had a great time that year. We how's really it, did. How's it going this year? It's going fantastic. Had an opportunity to speak to a lot of people, yeah. make some new friends, see some old friends and catch up. And it's just fantastic to be back in person and talking to other scientists about everything to do with human identification. So tell me a little bit about that because I believe that you are working on something and, and what is that all about, your your study? What, what, what are you doing? So uh, my dissertation work for my okay. PhD is actually focusing on using the skin microbiome, microbial DNA for human identification. So I'll have a talk on Thursday, um, you know, last one on okay. our schedule for Thursday before closing remarks. So I hope some people stick around. <laughs> uh, but the basics is I am attempting to use a method that most forensic geneticists know well, and that's using ancestry informative markers or population informative markers in bacteria to give us an accurate human identification. So you're telling me that I might have the same type of skin microbiome as somebody from my hometown. Um, is it like that or is it? Unlikely from your hometown. Okay. So let's assume you no longer live where in you did Monroe. as a child. Okay, in Monroe, yeah. Um, so you would have a similarity to maybe your wife and kids. Oh, or yes, yes. if okay. you're in college and have a roommate, okay. we know that particular animals influence um, your skin oh, microbiome as okay. well. So having pets, dogs and cats in a home make a difference. Rabbit? Uh, potentially. Okay. I haven't seen any study on rabbits. Maybe we need to fill in that gap there. Okay. Um, but it, there are plenty of things in your environment that impact your skin microbiome. But we actually have very solid research showing that overall, through several years, your microbiome stays stable. So even washing your hands within 30 or 40 minutes, 45 minutes of washing your hands, the main abundant microbes that you need on your skin to keep your skin healthy quickly repopulate. So using something that's like an ancestry informative marker like we did in human populations, we look at a single individual as a population, calculate the actual genetic differences between the microbes in my skin, the microbes on your skin, and can, with pretty good accuracy, identify someone from a skin microbiome swab. That's pretty impressive. I, I would have never imagined that. <laughs> so are you, you're getting the microbiomes, the bacteria, the other things that are there, are you growing them on a plate? How, what, are you, what are you doing? No, this is a analysis. very simple, right now, we're still, you know, working on the setup of a new genetic panel. Okay. So I'm swabbing directly from the skin. So our project really focused on the non-dominant hand. So I would take okay. swabbings directly from the skin and triplicate. And then we also did the foot and then the manubrium. Oh, okay. uh, because those are all three things that we would think would come in contact potentially at a crime scene or if you have clothing left then your skin cells may have rubbed off on clothing along with your skin microbiome um, everything we're focusing on right now though is living individuals so okay. a lot of the times I present my research and even the general public always seem to go to post-mortem interval or fluid identification yeah that is a very different avenue than the skin microbiome. I'm working with something that is a dynamic and living thing that wants to stay in some sort of equilibrium. Yeah. Postmortem interval, you have huge changes in the microbiome that's there based on the person no longer being alive. Right. Um, biological fluids that are left at crime scene, very similar things. They, some microbes will live for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and some won't live as long. Whereas the skin, we're hoping we can really get to the point that we're doing touch samples from object, okay. objects and identify yeah, yeah. someone. Um, looking at the actual like nuclear DNA compared to microbial DNA, we can take a swab from the individual or even a hard surface and extract both. So you're not potentially giving up the nuclear DNA that we're so used to working sure, with. Yeah. We can get that information. And if it's not a complete profile or not enough information to move forward, then the microbial DNA provides a wonderful adjunct, you know, test to the traditional avenue for identifying sure. someone. I love it. That sounds very, very exciting. And, you know, as you 
pass along through your schooling <laughs> and you get this PhD, what does the future hold for Allie? Oh, what man. is she looking to do? I feel like this is a question that has been <laughs> asked so many times in the last few days. Yeah. Especially ever since I've shamelessly been talking to all sorts of people about jobs. That's a perfect thing to be doing here, I uh, think. You know, I, I can make the pitch right now to you and say, I mean, if ProMega has something open, I'm willing to discuss. We should check ProMega.com <laughs> and see what they've got for openings. Yeah, they have. It'd be a good addition. They have some good listings. <laughs> um, I think right now the I've been focusing on kind of two different areas. And one is staying in the forensic realm and research and development side, but I would really like to go into industry type work. Yeah. I, I think after... Um, what is 11 years in academia, I would like a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, I have been involved with research since day one of undergraduate and yeah. we're almost done with three degrees now. I'd like to see what industry looks like. Um, I've also been looking into the data analysis side because the dissertation project I just talked about is huge in the machine learning okay. and applied statistics mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. identify potential new markers. So. I have been looking at that, but obviously a little bit harder when I'm really more of a traditional biologist and not a statistician sure, to sure. get a job yeah. in that sector. Um, so I'm really open to things that will help me and expand and continue to learn. That's so we'll see how that falls out. <laughs> Good luck with that. And, and I'm just saying, for all of those people who might watch this and, and check it out, <laughs> would you recommend being or trying to be a student ambassador for an ISHI? Oh, yes. Yes. So I, I loved my experience as a student ambassador. It was so exciting to be talking to you and Tara and Carol and everyone before we got to the conference this time. And even though I'm not official student ambassador this year, it's been wonderful to know so many people from Promega and have them supporting me and what I do and trying to, you know, help me network. It was just a fantastic opportunity. I would totally do it again if y'all would allow us to do it more than once. <laughs> a repeat? Yes. That would be awesome too. Um, okay, so I gotta ask, what Disney character do you most identify as? Oh, so this was on um, yeah. the article that they did with me. Mm -hmm. So I don't, by far my favorite Disney character and like, movie I've always liked is Alice in Wonderland. The whole okay. concept of there just being this crazy world and anything you can imagine can happen, I always loved. But Alice herself isn't normally the character that I'm like, that's who I identify with, not at all. For whatever reason, I've always been obsessed with the Cheshire Cat. The fact that he could come in with humor that I definitely do not have as a person, and then just kind of like disappear when he felt like it, and then yeah. show back up again. I, have, on a high I just note. love. And, yeah. And on a high note, every time just it disappear. Disappear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Allie, it was so great getting to chat with you again, and good luck with everything that you have, you know, moving forward in your life. It's been really great getting to know you and hanging out with you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for interviewing me again, Travis. It's you always can. great working with you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah. See you.